and get started. So I am Jordan. Um, I am a behavior support team specialist. Um, and today we are going to talk about um, what our role is um, and how we can support JCPS um, now and, and when we return um, into school. And so we're just gonna review a little bit of what, who we are and what we do. Um, so who are we? So our team is currently made up of a we have a board certified and licensed behavior analyst, um, and we have a, a certified school psychologist. Um, and kind of what makes our team unique is that we specialize in human behavior and how to change, shape, and teach um, behaviors. And, you know, changing behaviors that we, you know, aren't necessarily super fond of in the classroom. Um, and teaching new behaviors, behaviors we want to see more of, behaviors that we want um, our students to engage in more um, to increase their success in the classrooms. Um, and so kind of how our model is set up. Um, so we are split up into zones. Um, zone one is Amy Porter, um, myself, and Morgan Hunt. Um, Zone two is Brandon Franklin, Holly Birch, and Sam Shockley. Um, zone three, Kim Moore, Yolanda Williams. And then specifically for middle and high, we have Celise McGinnis and David Spencer. She was on last week. Um, and our zone support is our school psychologist. She kind of bebops around wherever we need her. Um, and so what is the goal or what is our goal um, as our program is being you know, built? Um, it's relatively new, but um, our goal is to utilize our expertise to really build capacity within JCPS schools, right? And what does that look like? We really want to um, empower staff with the necessary skills to not only prevent some of the challenging behavior that we see in the classroom, but also um, give them the skills to respond to the challenging behavior that inevitably occurs. Um, and with these skills, you know, we're, we're hopefully improving student success in um, the regular education classroom with least restrictive measures using those evidence based practices that we'll talk about. Um, and so how does it align? Why is it important? Um, we really focus, you know, kind of trying to tie it into the pillars, um, our backpack of success skills, you know, what, how does our program um, support this? And so, you know, in order for our students to build up their backpacks with meaningful skills and experiences, they have to be in the classroom, right? And um, behavior is a, a barrier at times for our, our students to be successful and remain in the classroom. And so, um, what our program really strives to do is, is teach those necessary skills um, to teachers, administration, um, education teams to um, really provide our students the increased opportunities to remain engaged in that classroom um, so that they can access the enriched content that, that teachers are, are giving them every day. Um, our second pillar being racial equity, um, you know, we, our science kind of looks at behavior a little bit differently than maybe some of the other ones that you've heard of, um, but we really look at behavior from a more functional standpoint. Um, and this, you know, by looking at this through more environmental changes as um, opposed to individual characteristics of students or um, maybe opinions, things like that, we really, uh, our science allows us to avoid subjective interpretation. Um, we are really data driven and really, you know, we really look to the science um, of behavior. And so this really, creates an opportunity for um, us to respond in a more equitable approach to student behavior. Um, and the third, the third pillar that we have is culture and climate, which is where our program is, is housed. Um, and so with giving our, our schools the opportunity to have not only um, you know, proactive supports, but um, a lot of uh, positive interventions that we can use to reduce the challenging behavior and really avoid situations um, that that could cause challenging behavior. That really impacts the culture and the climate of that classroom. Um, and we know in, in schools that have a really great team environment, if you have one classroom that's struggling, um, you, you kind of, that kind of affects the entire building, right? That, that um, teacher that's struggling, um, their colleagues become affected and um, their administration that supports them. And so if we're able to really change that culture and climate by um, you know, providing some of these supports, we really can uh, change the culture and climate of an entire school. Um, 
And so that's all fine and dandy, right? <laughs> um, but how do you get us, when do you request our, our level of support? Um, and so after, you know, tier one, two and three interventions are yielding limited, limited response, maybe um, things aren't changing as rapidly as, as one would expect. Maybe things are getting worse. Um, maybe you're, you're encountering new behavior that you're, you're unfamiliar or not used to. Um, once those tier one, two and three interventions aren't successful, um, that's when it would be appropriate to request our, our specialized assistance to then step in and really assist in the implementation, the training and the coordination of those tier three services. Um, and we're going to dive into kind of what that looks like specifically. Um, so what do our supports look like in a traditional classroom if we were back in school? Um, really, when when I get a, a case initially, first thing I do is, you know, review everything in Infinite Campus, look at um, behavior incidents, attendance, everything. We, we look at previous enrollments, all kinds of things. Um, and we want to sit down and have that initial conversation. We want the school to paint as clear of a picture for us as they can. Um, and, and the school really consists of everybody that is um, involved with that student. So that might be not only just the teacher, but maybe they have a lot of challenges in special area or maybe um, you know, we definitely want to meet with the assistant principal, the principal really um, develop relationships with, with everybody that's on the education team. Um, and so we really want to kind of hear hear what's been going on. We want to talk about, um, you know, any previously trialed interventions. We want to review um, any behavior support plans that might have already been developed. Um, really get, you know, a clear, like I said, a clear picture of what's been going on. Um, and then we're going to start completing indirect assessments and interviews. And we'll talk a little bit about what those documents look like in a bit. Um, but so once we have those initial conversations and we kind of have a clear picture of what the need is, um, then we'll start supports. And so um, initially we want to um, remain really discreet. You know, there's nothing more kind of altering than walking into a classroom and having someone go, oh, look, Miss Jordan, Miss Jordan, here, this is the student that you need to be watching for. This is Timmy, the Timmy's in the red shirt. Um, we don't want, we want to remain really discreet. We don't want to ostracize students any more than um, they already are um, by their behavior. And so we want to, you know, and, and knowing that we're there for them, that might impact their behavior for better and for worse. Um, and so, we want to just remain discreet. Um, we're going to probably do several observations. Um, and, you know, I like to try and schedule them for your really problematic times whenever um, the student is, is exhibiting the most challenging behavior, whether that be during transitions, during lunch, um, wellness, whatever, you know, that's when we really try to be there. Um, and then when we're also starting supports, we're also going to be um, making sure we're looking at any type of data collection system that's in place because we know that, that you know, that's necessary for tier three. Um, so we may help set one up. We may alter one that's already been put into place where we may say like, okay, great. Let's just look at the data and, um, you know, kind of keep going. Um, and so once we have a really clear picture, right, you guys have, the school has painted one for us. We've kind of observed it, seen it ourselves. Um, that's when we can start trialing and training different interventions. Um, and that doesn't just look like, you know, drawing interventions out of a hat, right? Um, we wanna be talking to teachers and um, staff members on what, you know, what is going to be the most functional evidence-based intervention that's gonna make, you know, the biggest impact for the student, but also what makes sense in your classroom? Um, what makes sense with your teaching style? Um, you know, we really want to develop together a plan that is going to be effective, right? Um, and so, you know, we'll sit down, review it, um, put the plan together as a team. Um, and then that initial initial implementation or when we're trialing things, you know, we've kind of described situations where we kind of want to be the shadow, right? We just want to be watching. Um, but for that initial implementation, it's going to be really important that we're there modeling, assisting with the implementation of those those. Um, those interventions, because we know, um, you know, just telling somebody how to do something doesn't always, that's not the most effective method of teaching. Um, and so really showing, um, you know, what this might look like is, you know, me being in a teacher's ear and I might be like, oh, you know, 
Miss Jackson, here's when I would go over and, you know, implement this intervention. Or sometimes what I'll do is I will start that intervention for them. And then the teacher will then just kind of pick up where I left off. Um, but really what we're trying to do is provide a much denser level of support at the beginning um, so that we can help, you know, ensure that things are going, going well and making sure that all team members across the board are really well trained in, in the interventions. Um, because some of them are, they feel a little, little awkward at times, or maybe, um, you know, it's not something that every teacher feels the most comfortable implementing on their own. So we really wanna provide a lot of support in the beginning. Um, and as we see that success, right, as teachers communicate to us, like, yeah, I got this, like, I'm good, um, you know, security team members, whoever are saying, yeah, I think I feel comfortable doing this. Um, and then we begin that begin to come become that shadow again in the classroom, kind of just observing, um, being there to troubleshoot any challenges. Um, and so we, you know, we might fade to just check ins coming every so often. Um, maybe that's, you know, checking in via phone, via email, whatever it is. Um, and all the while we're looking at the data, right? That's something that you'll hear us say a thousand times is, well, let's look to the data. Let's see what the response to intervention is. Um, let's analyze kind of how things have been going. Um, and so we'll be kind of doing that all together. Um, and as things progress, right, um, what does our services ending look like? Um, and so we're, there's no set period of time that we're not going to be there. It's not like, oh, you have six weeks of Miss Jordan. No, it's whatever that individual student needs and when the data reflects a relative decrease in challenging behavior. And I say relative because, um, you know, we know that some students are going to have some challenges, right? Kids aren't perfect. We can't expect them to be. Um, we also know that some students are going to be tier three, right? That that's, you know, factored into the tier system. So we um, begin to fade when one, the, the interventions are running well um, and, and every team member feels pretty confident in them. And two, we may also begin to fade once we see um, a relative decrease in that behavior. And so um, that might look like fading some of the interventions and I'll show you um, a behavior support plan uh, template that, that I've included, but, um, that might look like fading interventions and that, that might also look like um, exiting the case. And that might be, you know, having a formal meeting saying things are looking good, school's feeling confident. Um, we've seen a decrease in challenging behavior. We think you got it. How do you feel, you know, having that, that conversation? Um, and so that's kind of what things look like if we were to be back into the classroom, back into schools. Um, what do our supports look like during NTI? Um, I think as every role has has had to experience is we're really kind of molding and shifting into um, what is just generally needed to support teachers and parents and whatever way that that might look like. Um, so a lot of what we're doing right now is um, helping facilitate communication or create communication between schools and families. Um, so, you know, we're doing lots of um, parent check-ins, check teacher check-ins. Um, we really try to work as a liaison um, to communicate any challenges or needs that the family might have. Um, and what that looks like, you know, I may check in with mom, dad, whoever, um, once or twice a week. Um, or w once every other week, whatever the need is. Um, and sometimes parents, you know, disclose information to me that maybe they haven't had time to talk to the teacher about, or um, maybe something just very recently came up. Like we had a, I have a student who's struggling with order of operations right now. And so um, she, parent hasn't had time to talk to the teacher. It's been a really rough week homework's not going well. And so I, you know, in my check-in, I'm able to gather that information and the report back to the teacher, like, hey, you know, Timmy isn't doing great with, with order of operations. Um, mom's not sure how to teach it. What would, would you, how can I help support you? And sometimes that, you know, specifically that, you know, that teacher set up a special one-on-one -on -one meeting for the student. Um, and then she's also going to follow up with the parent. So, really just trying to um, help create that communication um, between the schools and the families. Um, we're also providing virtual classroom support. So 
me and my colleagues are in a lot of um, Google classrooms. We really just join the meets to try and um, provide additional support, such as, you know, reinforcing desired behaviors, you know, helping restate expectations, monitoring chat room, you know, the chat thread. Um, we model interaction styles and responding strategies. So what that looks like, you know, if the teacher is saying, hey, thumbs up if we're if we agree with the story, you know, I'm in the background giving my thumbs up to model for my students what active participation looks like. Um, and then we're in for virtual classroom support. We're also providing some recommendations for, um, you know, whole class virtual reinforcement system. It's systems. It's been a, um, a learning curve, right, for everybody. And so we're all having to be really creative in the ways that we're doing things. And we're trying to be a good, you know, resource for, for schools and teachers. Um, and so we're also providing individual virtual classroom support. So if we have a specific student that's really struggling, um, you know, we may go through the exact kind of process that I outlined earlier, um, doing assessments, interviews, We and I'll show you the documents that we utilize. Um, we'll do some observations, um, really, you know, very similar process. Um, we may, you know, with, with NTI being a little bit more challenging, we may just provide some recommendations for interventions. Um, and, and at times we have had to create some formal um, behavior support plans um, to help support students. Um, and we have been trying to get really creative with the way that we're training, right? We, we keep saying, you know, the best way to teach isn't always just to tell, it's to also show and do. And so we have, um, we've had to get really creative in the ways that we're, we're doing those trainings. And I know some of my colleagues are using their, their um, children to kind of <laughs> use for um, modeling some of the interventions that we want to, um, we want, you know, teachers to implement and then um, recording it and then sending that so that there is a model um, and helping participate and model during, um, you know, virtual meets and things like that. Um, and then we're also providing individualized home-based NTI support. And so if a family is communicating that NTI is a real struggle for them, for whatever reason, you know, things aren't going well, we'll outline a very similar process with them, you know, talking to the school, talking to the teacher, talking to the family, um, creating, you know, uh, going through that whole process of interviews and assessments and things like that. And then we'll help you know, provide recommendations and interventions to try at home to help increase success with NTI. So, you know, whether that be looking at routines, visuals, you know, really whatever it takes to help that student be successful. Um, and we do our trainings, you know, via live meets, phone, video modeling, all of those things, nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Um, and so, really we and and kind of with all of the support we're just kind of following up and troubleshooting challenges as needed we just want to be a really good resource for um our families and our, our schools to you know help get through this really tough time um and another uh support that we're offering is that we're providing tailored trainings to schools on topics that they would like you know um and so some of the schools that i have relationships with are reaching out to me saying hey you know I would like for my teachers to be trained on classroom wide reinforcement systems and kind of the behavior, you know, expertise behind it. And so I'll, I've developed, you know, individual trainings for them and um, provided, you know, that training be, via Zoom or live meet, you know, whatever. And so we're really just summary is we're trying to be um, that supportive resource that I know all of our district really needs right now. Um, and so what are some myths and misconceptions of our support? Um, like I said, we're relatively new. I think we're like three years, um, three years old in, in JCPS years. Um, and so really, you know, we've, we've heard, we've encountered lots of situations, but, um, you know, some people think that we act as case managers and that isn't the case at all. Um, the school really knows their resources and their students and, and their, their staff members best. We really just help to kind of coordinate and build that team with with this with the school um, level team to you know just help kind of facilitate the process. Um, you know, there's thoughts that we replace one tier one, two or three supports, and really what our our goal is is to you know really strengthen the staff and, and school based team skills so that you know hopefully we work ourselves out of a job eventually, right? So that all of these skills and all of um, 
you know, that, that schools feel really, really comfortable in managing some of these challenges on their own. Um, that another myth is that we replace building level response team. Um, and, you know, we are, I will say our team is always down to, you know, help out in whatever ways that are needed, um, really support staff during, you know, crisis situations, crisis prevention, difficult conversations, everything, you know, all of that. Um, but we really work alongside the team members that are already there. We don't replace, we don't replace them. Um, and that we, you know, the, the idea that we provide one-on-one -on -one support, um, we, we actually don't, we are there a couple days a week with time permitting, um, you know, usually half days. And like I said, our model is really set up for us to be more consultative, but, um, you know, we're not there. We're not able just with the size of the district and the amount of team members, we're not able to provide that one-on-one -on -one support. We really, and our our client is really the teacher in the school. We want to provide those, we want to provide that intervention and training to teachers, to staff members, so that they can be successful without us. Um, and so here are some of the support documents. Um, this is a behavior function identification worksheet that I'm sure you guys are familiar with. Um, this is a sample behavior um, support plan um, and this is for a kindergartner that was very uh, that required a lot of um, support and um, so this is a pretty extensive behavior support plan um, but i liked i wanted to use this as an example because you can see um, you know the way that it's set up we you know our findings from our assessments are on there um, defining target behaviors and you know what what uh, replacement behaviors that we have are, you know, trying to utilize. Um, we set it up based off of um, preventative strategies and, you know, what those evidence-based interventions are that we recommend. And then, um, you know, a crisis plan. Um, but um, this was a very long running plan. Um, and what we, what you can see, you know, is we began to fade interventions without me fading, without me exiting. Um, and as we saw success from the data, we were able to, you know, start fading interventions from transitions instead of having that tier three level um, of, of intervention for transitions, we were able to begin to fade that back after we saw success. Um, and this might be a way that your behavior support team member um, works their BSP to begin fading before they, they actually exit the case. Um, so that's an example behavior support plan. This is a progress monitoring sheet so you might see this um, behavior team, behavior support team members might be utilizing this to um, track data. Down at the bottom, there are some spots where you can have notes from different meetings that you've had um, and dates, so that you can look back on on any notes that you might have that were important. Um, and so, what are evidence based practices? This is something that I've been saying the whole time, right? Um, Evidence-based practices are the interventions and strategies that we are recommending or implementing that have proven to be effective through effective through replicated peer-reviewed research. It's not what I, you know, Miss Jordan's personal opinion on what she thinks is going to work, or my neighbor's personal opinion of what they think is going to work. It's what the science recommends, you know. And so, behavior analysts and psychologists are really bound by ethics to only recommend re re interventions that have been researched and proven to be effective in changing, teaching, or reducing um, those behaviors. And so, you know, what we'll do is, like we said, we want to talk to the team. We want to recommend, you know, interventions that are feasible and functional, um, functionally appropriate to, to that classroom and to that student. So we will work with your school team to really, um, build that BSP, um, you know, find those appropriate interventions, um, get, you know, make sure we have a solid, strong target-based data collection system in place. Um, we'll really help, you know, try to monitor the support of, of how that's, you know, how things are going. And so, um, how, how do you make a request for support? So maybe you have a student in mind right now that's maybe having some challenges with NTI or you're anticipating some challenges once we return to brick and mortar. 
um, teachers, communicate to your administration, um, whoever you have a relationship with. Um, we get referrals, requests for supports all the time from counselors, EC implementation coaches, APs, principals, you know, everybody. Um, I, I just encourage you to talk to your school-based team because schools are big and, and there may be some resources at the school level, um, you know, because our district is so big and, and there's, uh, you know, we're, we're, there's not a whole lot of us. We really have to save our supports for the, that high tier three, um, tier three level of need. Um, but communicate to your administration that you're having challenges. Um, and then once, once administration says, yes, absolutely. We need support. Um, just, you know, whoever can really send us a request for support, but, um, you know, have your principal assistant principal counselor, whoever, um, send requests for support to Matt Anderson. He is our new, um, supervisor and he's fantastic to work with. Um, very easy to talk to guy. So, um, send him an email, give him a call. Um, and I'm, he will, you know, direct you to the, the correct, correct zone, um, BCBAs that will be picking up the case. Um, and so we really hope to support your school soon. This is our team. And, uh, I will say that we have, you know, a lot of people that are, are super, super passionate about helping not only students that are, you know, some of the most difficult students to help, but also teachers and administration that really need it. So we really hope to, um, we really hope to support your school soon too.